Shalom from Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, and this is TV7's Editor's Note. And today's program is going to be a special program with a lot of insights, updates. And for that, I would like to invite our new colleague, namely Dr. Michael Duran, formerly the Senior Director at the U.S. National Security Council for the MENA region, the Middle East and North Africa, and currently uh, a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute and the director of the Center for Peace and Security in the Middle East. There we go. All right. Um, in this uh, update today, Dr. Duran, I, I think many viewers are very keen to hear what uh, we've been concocting uh, behind the scenes. It's been a vigorous process for quite several months. Nonetheless, go ahead. The floor is yours. So, well, uh, Jonathan, first of all, uh, thank you for uh, for having me on the show. And uh, let me uh, also welcome you as my new colleague at the Hudson Institute. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's uh, really uh, delightful for me uh, to, to tell all of your viewers that, that you and I are going to be working much more closely together because you'll now be my colleague at the Center for Peace and Security in the Middle East at the Hudson Institute. And uh, we're absolutely thrilled to have you on board um, and excited by all of the um, talents, capabilities, and insights that you're going to bring to us. Well, uh, as I will humbly say, all glory to God, as uh, somebody who is obviously very dedicated to his faith. Uh, but nonetheless, we have a lot to do together. We're like-minded. We understand the key challenges that Israel is face, uh, facing, that the United States is facing, that Europe is faith, uh, facing, and Western civilization at large, to include also our allies and partners in the East and in the global South. So we're, we're seeing eye to eye on many of those issues, and therefore uh, the first point that we're going to focus on is U.S.-Israel relations, and you're running a conference, obviously, in Washington with Hudson, I'm going to be joining you there. What can you tell us about it? Well, uh, uh, just before I say any words about the conference, let me just say, I keep waiting to find a subject on which I disagree with you. And I mm. and so far, I don't think there's a, there's there's been one. Uh, it's sort of odd to me how much I, uh, I I agree with you. Your your background and my background are so different. But uh, when I talk to you, I feel like we see the world in the same way. I'm sure... Uh, it wouldn't it, it wouldn't be normal if we if we didn't find something that we disagree on. I'll be, I'll keep looking for it and I'll let you know when it when when it happens. But looking so far, forward to it. Uh, I just complete uh, complete agreement. Very like minded. Uh, so we're having a conference. It's going to be a closed conference, uh, but uh, bits of it will be uh, will will be uh, will be broadcast uh, uh, to the public. Uh, on U.S.-Israel relations here at the Hudson Institute in Washington, D.C. It's going to take place on um, April 1 and 2. Um, and there'll be uh, for, uh, former Vice President Mike Pence will, uh, uh, will, will, will be here, Senator Tom Cotton, uh, lots of uh, experts, Walter Russell Mead, uh, Elliot Abrams, uh, and looking at the crisis in U.S.-Israeli relations and trying to find a way out of it. Um, and, uh, of course, you will be there. And we're looking forward to your insights as well. Indeed. Well, uh, while this program airs, obviously, I'll be in a plane on my way already uh, to Washington. Uh, nonetheless, I think that it's it's a great opportunity to have also uh, the platform to uh, interview. Uh, we're talking now about a new production that we're working on a title. Of course, the, the working title right now is The Deep Dive. Uh, but uh, we're going to have a lot of quite unique senior officials joining us on the various productions to discuss core issues and strategic issues related to the United States, uh, the security of Israel, the peace of Jerusalem, the necessity to confront the, the common challenges and threats, uh, not only to Washington and Jerusalem, but also to all of the Western world and to do so in a manner that will justify the mandate that the people have granted to the leaderships at hand. And that is something that I believe is uh, very much needed. 
Yeah, and uh, Jonathan, you bring, uh, um, I think, pretty much a unique skill set to bear uh, on, on, this, on this problem. Uh, you're somebody who understands um, the Israeli strategic environment um, extremely well. I would call you an expert on the Israeli strategic environment. Uh, and uh, y yet uh, you also uh, have deep connections in the strategic communities of uh, our key allies in Europe. Um, and then, uh, and then you also have an understanding of the of the situation in in Washington. You speak English. You speak. You're fluent in Hebrew. You speak um, European languages, and uh, um, and also you have this uh, uh, this deep connection uh, to the Christian communities um, uh, ar around the world. And I think the that you have um, developed a worldview. Uh, based on all of those capabilities and um, uh, and uh, and uh, and connections, and I think that your 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 um, uh, understanding, your linguistic ability, and your um, and your strategic insights are going to help us with, with what I see to be the core goal of my organization. I mean, when I say my organization, I mean my center at Hudson, but also of this conference that we're holding, and that is to to create a tighter um, strategic community among Israelis and Americans, and uh, uh, also I, I hope eventually Europeans as well, so that we all have a common strategic picture at this moment of tremendous flux and change. Absolutely. Well, I, I do have to highlight that um, for me, uh, when when I look at at the world, first of all, I'm humbled by uh, all the, the the praise granted to me. You really don't have to, but uh, nonetheless, you know, I, I see this as a uh, a blessing and a great opportunity to work on again crucial issues that need to be dealt with. Uh, there are many countries around the world that are very dear to my heart, including Finland. Sweden, Estonia, the Netherlands, Germany, uh, even South Africa and the South, despite its uh, current government, uh, and uh, countries also in the Pacific, Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, and others. And uh, I, I can't name, of course, all the countries that uh, I have had special connections with, because we won't have enough time for the entire update today. Um, but nonetheless, I, I see this as a great opportunity to have also a networked access together with the Christian world, the Jewish world, and to combine our efforts as the body of Christ around the world to allow it also through Hudson have direct access into Washington and to portray reality and understanding all the various strategic challenges at hand and what needs to be done in order to shift those for the sake of security, peace, uh, granting the protection to Christian minorities in the Middle East and Africa. We just had uh, another church burned down in uh, Sudan. We're seeing many challenges all over the world. And at this moment in time, we realized, uh, and when I say we, Mike, myself, TV7 leadership, Hudson leadership, uh, the, the crucial importance of this collaboration and how we can implement it to really further the goals of our vision. Right. There's a, there, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of communities out there. You mentioned the Christian communities, Jewish communities. There, there, there are a lot of communities who have a strong interest and a stake in the peace in, the peace of Jerusalem, uh, supported by, guaranteed by the U.S.-Israeli relationship. Um, and I think a lot of them don't have a sense that they have someone with the, um, their sensibility, their interests, an understanding of them that is, that is working with them to develop a strategic vision. That's, that's one of the areas where I think um, you're going to make a huge contribution. And I'm not saying these things. You say I'm, I'm praising you. I'm not praising you. I'm, I, I'm giving you an objective assessment of what I think your uh, your skills and your opportunities are. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to putting those uh, works to good use. Um, let's take another step forward. 
And we're not going to unveil everything that we're planning on. Uh, obviously, there, there is much in the pipeline, and we're going to work very hard to achieve our goals and to do this in good faith, also for the sake of all those who support us and stand by us. And the Center for Peace uh, and uh, Security in the Middle East is something that will promote many various endeavors. Uh, and I have the opportunity as part of that also to uh, be a senior fellow now. Uh, with Hudson for that purpose. Senior and fellow at Hudson, welcome. I appreciate that. And uh, for that, and with all of the excitement around, uh, I'd like also to take the opportunity to first and foremost deliberate what we're dealing with in today's reality. Um, and I think much of what we see today originates in a fundamental issue, and that is a lack of leadership. Well, there's, you know, you know, the United States is um, is going through uh, a period of confusion um, about its its identity, uh, fun its fundamental identity, and confusion about therefore its role in the world, that is unlike anything I've seen in my in my lifetime. Um, I, you know, I was I, I was 18 in 1980. So I guess you can say I remember the 70s. I don't know if I really remember the 70s um, uh, as a you know as a mature adult. Um, but uh, the 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 nearest thing to to what's going on today in America is the 60s and the 70s. But I think it's very very uh, uh, very different. You had a kind of cultural conflict in the in the 60s and the and and the 70s. But I really feel like in my lifetime. Uh, the hardware and the software of the United States changed very, very radically, very, very quickly. And when I say the hardware, I mean the deindustrialization of the United States. When I was a boy growing up in Indiana, everybody had a father who either worked at the plant or was involved in some kind of activity, sales or something that involved going to the plant talking to people of the plan. I mean, what I'm trying to say is there was a, an industrial America that touched the, that touched the life of, uh, uh, of, 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 uh, of everyone. It's not there anymore. It's gone. All these jobs moved overseas to the detriment of the U.S. middle class. And then we had this software change. And by that, I mean the rise of the Internet, the collapse of the traditional journalism um, as we knew it. This is why what you are doing is so important to bring reliable, trustworthy information delivered at a high intellectual level to a large number of people. This is something that we used to be able to rely on the press to do. We no longer can. Uh, and uh, the press used to present to us in America uh, a picture of who we were, and it used to kind of uh, mediate an intelligent discussion about who we are. We can't rely on it to do it anymore. It's all the, 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 they're all uh, um, the press is now owned by specific interests that are pushing uh, uh, propaganda lines constantly. Um, it means that organizations like mine, organizations like yours, we have a new role to play, a very important role to play in informing the public uh, and and uh, and carrying out high level debates about really important issues. But these issues, these these discussions and debates are uh, more important than ever, but they're also fraught with difficulty because of all this confusion about what the American role is in the world. Uh, just to uh, put things in perspective, and, and I'll touch briefly also on what you just uh, said, uh, the Hudson includes distinguished fellows such as Secretary Mike Pompeo, uh, the uh, uh, president, of course, John Walters and CEO, uh, who was uh, very senior in the Bush administrations, uh, we have uh, General McMaster, uh, part of it, Mike Duran, of course, and, and many others were very, very significant uh, in uh, the establishment in Washington and people who I regard as like-minded uh, and provide very uh, uh, genuine insight. And we will have direct access now to all of them being able to convey what they understand from the various complexities at hand from a strategic level, from a tactical level, from operational levels uh, in relation to the various uh, challenges that we're uh, reporting on on a regular basis, uh, namely with regard to the Middle East, 
broader Middle East, Europe, of course. Uh, it will accommodate Europa stands. It will accommodate uh, the Middle East Review and, and the various uh, Jerusalem studio productions that we're doing. But we're talking here about expanding our volume, not redu a reduction of certain things or uh, exchanging one for another. Uh, we're looking to really deepen everything that we do and and to do that collaboration it also opens additional doors in europe of course and in israel and elsewhere and god willing i'm seeing this uh flourish quite substantively now with regard to disinformation unfortunately we are in an age and i, I always touch on 2003 2002 when there was a trend uh, transition of the major channels from news channels pure news channels into commercial channels, business channels, and therefore much of the foreign investments and interest groups took hold of those various news channels. Today, you won't uh, have one channel uh, from the larger channels without commercials about uh, the Emiratis this and the Qataris that and uh, the, the Chinese uh, uh, enterprises and so on and so forth. And you understand that much of those Various totalitarian regimes in the East, irrespective of whether they're partners or allies or what they are, they have a certain influence on the manner in which those uh, broadcast uh, uh, networks or channels um, relay the information. And, and therefore, there are missing pieces that should never occur in news. And therefore, I believe it's always important to go to the source. In 1918, uh, a U.S. senator called Hiram Johnson provided a lecture or, or addressed the Senate uh, right before the entry into World War II, and he had the famous quote of the first casualty before war comes is truth. And therefore, we need to combat that deception and, and make sure the truth is still getting to the people at home. The, the, um, in addition to all the factors that, that you mentioned, um, um, there's another one that I think is important to, to note, and that is the destruction of the organic connection between uh, the, I'm talking about with, particularly with newspapers, the, the, the destruction of the organic connection between a particular community and the writers in the, uh, in the, in the, in the paper. When, when I grew up, I used to be a paper boy in, in Indiana, and I would um, before I went to school in the morning, I would deliver the, I, I no longer remember, it was the Indianapolis Star and the News Tribune. I think the Star was the morning paper and the News Tribune was the afternoon paper, but I may have it wrong. Anyway, one was the morning paper, one was the evening paper. In those papers, we had, there, there, were, um, there were columnists, local Indiana columnists. Of course, they had the uh, the the papers would carry the um uh the 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 big columns of writers that were syndicated across the United States but they also had local columnists who were discussing local issues and talking to local to to local people and of course those papers were were funded in two ways one one of them was subscriptions and the other was uh was want ads uh by from local local businesses but these were these were um, outlets that represented a specific community of people, and that was having conversations with them all the time about their concerns and their outlook. Now the entire the news of the entire country is reported to Americans from New York and Washington D.C. Uh, their local voices have been shut out, uh, and the and the the and the funding model is totally different. It's no longer by local subscriptions. It's from um, internet advertising. And that opens up the opportunity uh, uh, for the kind of manipulation, basically, or distortion that, that you're saying, that you're discussing. And it, and, it, and it ends the organic connection between a community and, uh, um, and, the, and the people doing the thinking. You know, you, can, you, can't, you can't understand the world by just uh, um, having the, the view from the moon or the view from nowhere. What, what, what's going on, what's, what's important, what is, um, what's an interest, what's a fact, all of these depend on, a, on an actual point of view. And a point of view, it can only, uh, can only be um, one that, uh, I, that comes from a specific place 
and a specific community. Again, this is one of the things that I think you're doing that is so interesting and so valuable is that you recognize that there's a community out there or a series or set of communities that don't have anyone helping them think through with them the strategic, their strategic interests, their strategic concerns, and their and their outlook. And that's part of what our job is, I think, now. Absolutely. Well, uh, there are those who are trying to cater to the Jewish community. There are those who are trying to cater to the Christian community. Uh, however, their access to the actual sources of information is limited. And they rely on press releases. They rely on uh, the, the reporting of others. And unfortunately, many times it's taken out of context because of it. And that puts us in a unique opportunity where we're part of the source. We, we communicate with the source. We uh, converse with them. Uh, just before the show, I had uh, the uh, two conversations, one with a European general and another with uh, an Israeli uh, intelligence officer that uh, uh, is very much involved in many of the various intricacies at this point in time. And we're taking that information. Of course, we need always to think about what not to say rather than what yes to say on air, because uh, we're bound by uh, that uh, for obvious reasons. Nevertheless, it gives us the opportunity to uh, provide content that truly matters, that you at home will be able to understand genuinely what are the challenges facing Israel, the peace of Jerusalem, the challenges facing the United States. Of course, we all hear the various reports and we know the general outlook, but what are the true causes behind the scenes that drive the, the various forces at hand? And we'll try to really uh, dive deeper into those different challenges and ask difficult questions, not just uh, for niceties. No, we want to have those in office responsible for their actions, and we will make sure that you will be a lot wiser, a lot more knowledgeable at the end of the day. We'll know what to pray for, what to communicate with your representatives about, and potentially also how to act in different situations. I know that many here in Israel are also watching us, and therefore it is also always important for us to update on the various specifics on how to act in certain environments. But nonetheless, uh, all of our productions, we are not market-based. We're uh, free entirely, all of our productions. And therefore, I do like to encourage you, if you're blessed by our productions, you're blessed by what we do, you're understanding the vision that we're now entering into a new phase of, which is a lot more robust, uh, I would like to encourage you to stand by us Go to our website at www.tv7israelnews.com where you'll be able to support us via TFTN. And also, uh, soon we will also be able to provide some insight on how to support Hudson specifically, also uh, the Center for Peace and Security in the Middle East, which is going to do very robust work. And I'll be collaborating with them on those matters in a very uh, strong fashion which is also a 501c3, a nonprofit, and does this also for the sake of the public to improve America and to put it in, a, uh, in the role of leadership as it should be since uh, the strategic backbone. And this is something that we here in Israel always highlight in our conversations behind the scenes. The United States is the strategic backbone of the state of Israel. Without the United States, I know that uh, there are different schools of thought with different people, but uh, the, the way Israel looks at it, without the United States, Israel will falter and will be in a very difficult situation. So obviously, we don't want that to happen. We want to continue to force uh, a certain understanding, a drive behind our activities and to do so in a manner that will equip all of us with the tools necessary to truly impact, make a, a genuine impact for the sake of the peace of Jerusalem and much more. Dr. Duran? Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. I see it uh, uh, exactly, the, exactly the same way. What, what we are doing 
uh, is uh, an elite activity. Uh, the, we, are, we are engaging in strategic thought to inform the democratic debate about the role of the United States in the world. Um, at the Hudson Institute, we don't have a uh, we don't have a line from on high. Our boss John Walters doesn't tell us what to say about uh, um, about anything. But there, I think there's a kind of an ethos in the in the organization uh, in that we think that U.S. Uh, U.S. engagement on the world stage is a great benefit to the United States and to the world, and it needs to be continued. So I think we're against those people on the left and on the right. We're calling for the United States to pull out of the Middle East or to pull back and leave uh, the Middle Easterners um, on their own. We see that as a uh, opportunity for uh, uh, China and Iran, uh, together with Russia, to uh, to completely supplant the United States in the Middle East and to, to become the dominant players in the global energy um, uh, uh, the global energy markets, with uh, tremendous detrimental impact on Europe. And the um, uh, and and the rest of the, uh, the the rest of the world, as I mentioned, this is an elite activity. And when I say an elite activity, I mean it's by its nature, it's an activity that a small number of people are going to have to engage in. Um, it's and and it, one that requires the support of lots of other people so that we can do this uh, do this work. So we are deeply appreciative of of any support that we get whether it's moral support or economic support, uh, because we can't do it uh, except in partnership with the public. Well, this is all the time that we have uh, for today's update. Uh, much more to come in the future. I'd like to, of course, thank uh, Mike Duran for your time. And we will see a lot more uh, from you and of you uh, on the various productions. Uh, but uh, I'd like also to thank all of you at home. Uh, pray for this new partnership uh, and this new stage in the activities that we're also undergoing. And uh, with God's grace, we'll be able to truly impact the nations for his name's sake, but also uh, for the sake of the security and peace of Jerusalem, which we're praying for every day. So for me here in Jerusalem, Shalom. For more of TV7's productions and editorials, we invite you to visit our website at tv7israelnews.com.